Welcome to this week's episode of Gift of Respect. We've got an awesome guest with you here today. Her name is Tina Griffin. Give you a little background on Tina. She's been a Hollywood actor for well over a decade. Uh, you've seen her on such shows as Lizzie McGuire, uh, Drake and Josh, uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live, Young and the Restless, uh, Malcolm in the Middle, a favorite amongst many people, and many, many films. Uh, she's not on here just as an actress. That is definitely an important part of why she's on today's show, but it's in relation to Hollywood, what she's seen in regards to the issues of respect, how women are portrayed, and that's really today's discussion. Thank you, Tina, for joining us. Thank you for having me, and thank you for opening up your life and heart to help other people with their platforms and their main message to reach more people, because in today's society, I think it's important that we use the talents we were born with to make a difference, so thank you for the opportunity, Mike. Oh, well, thank you. And for many of our followers, they may know you as Tina Marie. So I'll let you explain. Is Tina Marie your stage name and Tina Griffin is your your, your given name? Well, uh, actually, Holowinski is my maiden name. And because when I moved to Hollywood at the age of 20, not married, no one could pronounce Holowinski. They were calling me Miss Wisconsin in film class out on Hollywood Boulevard. So I decided let's ditch the Holowinski since no one could say it or spell it, which I don't know if you had the same issue. Tina and I were joking about it yesterday. but um. Coming from Wisconsin, it's just hard to pronounce. So in acting class, when I started taking the classes, I just dropped the last name and went by Tina Marie for speaking. And then I met uh, an amazing man nine years later, Luke, and uh, took his last name on. And now just uh, Tina Griffin, Tina Marie, Tina, whatever you <laughs> want to call me is fine. <laughs> but um, yes, so We do have a similar situation that a lot of followers here <laughs> or viewers or listeners may not know. I did start my my college days in theater. My life dream was to be an actor before I switched into this career field. And so I had always been told I would have to change my last name. So like you, I had all these names ready to roll, you know, because Mike Domish spelled the way I spelled it. You never go over uh, <laughs> in the world of theater or film, you know. And so you do, you think of goofy names like Michael T. Starr, you know, just silly stuff. So <laughs> well, it's, well, it's crazy, and it's like so many actors that I would work with on Hollywood for that decade, like even Ashton Kutcher. I have in a in the pop culture show that I'm doing right now, Hollywood Exposed. He just came out at the Teen Choice Awards about a year ago and said, my name is not Ashton. And if you could actually hear over all the screaming girl fans, he was saying, my name is Chris. And I went by my middle name for acting. And the more actors you realize, they a lot of them change their names. So it's not as I wanted to, but for, for my reason, yeah, no one could explain it. And my acting coach actually told me in the first couple months of moving out there from the farm in Wisconsin, he's like, Tina, if you don't lose that accent, all you're going to be doing is milk and cheese commercials in Hollywood. So get ready. Right. Well, I appreciate you sharing that insight. So that's great. Uh, Tina, if you could tell us a little bit more background on yourself and what you brought you here to us today. Well, it actually, uh, my whole reason for doing what I do is I was born again at the age of 16. I placed my faith in Christ. I love Jesus. I um, want to do what he's called me to do. And that's the first time I actually had purpose in my life. And so when that happened, uh, I really felt at that point my life would, life would never be the same. I told my parents at the age of 19, I'm moving to Hollywood, and I'm going to share truth to celebrities. Of course, my dad, uh, never leaving the farm, the only time he left the farm was to go to church on Sundays. He drove with my mom 3,500 miles following me because it was my dream, so I had to take my own vehicle. And I went with a friend, moved to Hollywood, and started doing film and TV work, um, got heavily involved in... Uh, Cal State Los Angeles and got a film and television broadcasting degree and through that along with the celebrities that I've met firsthand like really in depth and I share a ton of stories when I speak to teens parents and do all these different conferences I was even like a personal driver for Ray Liotta he has done a ton of movies Hannibal like it's a pretty gruesome film Hannibal for example I've been in his Hollywood home his mansion We've had a lot of long conversations, and being his personal driver for the Oscar several years ago, it gave me a huge insight of what he really believes, for example. He shelters his own kids from his own entertainment. He's the voiceover on a lot of Grand Theft Auto video games, which are also very graphic. However, I keep in touch with a lot of my friends that still do act in Hollywood because it did segue from a decade of acting and then it overlapped for five years where I was acting a ton and speaking a ton and now I've been so busy speaking that I now live in the middle of the US so it's easy access to pretty much any city I'm asked to speak in but the core is God and my main um, concern is what kind of entertainment our kids are watching today and many of it parents are either not aware 
and sad to say some parents don't care. They think, oh, the entertainment is fine, and the second I do a parent presentation, and I have a brand new parent presentation that came out a month ago, parents are floored and saddened by the video games their kids are playing, the movies they're watching, thinking that there's clean content in it, and when they realize what I show them when I explain, they, they're they putting the connections together thinking that's why my teen is depressed, suicidal, has a negative attitude, aggressive, has fights, bowling issues, I mean all of it, and a lot of it stems from entertainment, so that's why I do what I do, is because I see a huge correlation between teen crime, teen issues, and our pop culture. And when you say what you do, what you do, the name of the program you travel and speak on? It's called Hollywood Exposed, and I've been doing it for the past decade. Actually, this year, this June, will be 10 years that I've been speaking on this, and I can't believe it. The time has flown by, and I keep telling teens, you know what? I would rather do this every day of my life and take the chance. And I, I, I'm honest with teens. I'm like, you know what? I put a target on my head when I go speak about these issues because I know I'm going to upset some teens in the audience, but at the same time, it impacts them. I get emails from teens I spoke at a couple schools in Upper Michigan seven years ago, Mike, and I'm getting emails several weeks ago from teens that are now mid-20s that said, you know what, you talked about some personal stuff that day. I've been thinking about it ever since. I was upset when I first heard it, but I'm so glad I decided to wait to have sex until my wedding night. And it, I didn't want to because I knew it was the right decision, but you wrecked it for me in a good way. And so I do what I do in the Hollywood Exposed presentation because I know it's going to make people think outside the box make decisions according to who they are as a person and not base their identity on what Hollywood is trying to sell them. And I love, like I know you get when you speak, I love when you can see physically the light bulb go off with your audience when you're talking on stage. Yeah, um, definitely. And you speak re regarding sexual issues. So what are, what are issues on the, in the world of sex that you discuss with students in regards to how Hollywood portrays it versus reality or versus having a respectful life themselves? Um, I, I talk about a lot of topics. My typical presentation is about 90 minutes, and I send out an event form ahead of time, so each venue will have a chance to email me back their main issues. Like I'm doing a truth event, a purity conference for men and women up in Boise, Idaho in two weeks. So yeah. they're wanting me to talk about the, the sexual issues. Excellent. So let's say you are discussing the sexual issues. What, what aspects are you bringing out? What discussions I, on the sexual issues are you sharing? If they allow me to go as deep as I can go, I talk about the sexually transmitted disease, diseases, what's out there. But it's not a fear tactic. It's here's what pop culture is not telling you. They will show two people jumping in bed on soap operas. I've even worked on Young and the Restless Days of Our Lives, so I explain I might be playing a patron in a coffee shop, but the very next scene we have young people jumping in bed, but they're not talking about the STDs. They're not talking about pregnancy, and yet... A lot of these people I know firsthand as friends, and so I explain to them they're not doing that in real life, and I explain to them how they're careful, like Usher, for example, for music, for sex. I, I share quotes and video footage in my presentation that talks about Usher saying abstinence is the best way you can possibly live your life. Don't be pressured into sex because you never want to do something you will live to regret. Those are his exact words. It's, it's ingrained in my mind from meeting these people and from getting these videos. So I'll explain how they promote sex in their music and I'll give a couple lyrics as examples and then I'll explain but here's how they really live their lives and teens are like what he really thinks this and I'm like yes don't so think do that you, what they're pushing pause right you. there. How do you yeah. deal with the contradiction then? Do you address that? Do you call out these hollies? So do you say oh, yeah. Usher makes his music by selling sex as, and that's picking on Usher but that's the example you gave sure. by selling sex but in his real life he doesn't do that well, then do you show that hypocrisy, and it's not really to praise Usher for how he lives his personal life, it's to say, why isn't he congruent in his personal life and in his message? You know, if you that got is a, as a speaker and said one thing and did something completely different in your own life, you would hold no credibility as a speaker. Do you discuss why don't we hold celebrities to that kind of credibility level who are being themselves? In other words, if I'm an actor portraying a role in a movie, that's very different. That's a written character. You could argue that's different. A singer to the world appears to be projecting themselves, even though they're doing a role when they get on that stage. Yeah, and they are they are living a role on the stage, and I do show the hypocrisy, not in a, a shame on them mentality, because I don't want 
young people who idolize these fans to get mad at me personally for wrecking their celebrity status and who they idolize. I do it in a way which makes teens question, wow, what is really reality and what isn't, and why are they not um, showing the consequences if they're really living this other lifestyle. Now, some celebrities do have problems, but I actually explain that. Lindsay Lohan, she's constantly going into a drug rehab. Charlie Sheen, constantly having issues going into rehab. Um, Corey Monteith, I show in Glee, they're promoting... It, it started out as a great show, and I explained that. Over the years, great show, I promoted it. I said, perfect singing show. I grew up singing for 16 years, played the piano for a decade, love singing. A lot of young people love following that show, but now I, I showed them, here's where the show first started out, here's what happened as a result. Now you have an actual poor young guy at like early 30s dying of a, a drug overdose that had issues with drugs and alcohol, but towards the end of the season, last couple seasons of Glee, it's been more negative um, behaviors they were promoting and here this guy is a victim of what they actually sing about just like the guy and I hate saying the name of this show but jackass I hate saying the name of the show when I share so I don't it's on a slide I'm like you guys know the show and by this time I've got them the audience is quiet they're listening they're they're thinking differently about entertainment I'm like look at the star of that show fiery crash a year ago in Pennsylvania cr smashed his car 80 miles an hour, killed him and his best friend in his car. There's nothing left of the car. I show a picture of it. But I'm like, look what he promoted in his own entertainment with those stunts. And he's glamorizing drinking an hour before he dies in that fiery crash. Tw does a Twitter picture and shows a bunch of pictures of him and his friends drinking the alcohol. So I do show how what you see on TV is a lot of times not reality of how these celebrities are really living their lives and how celebrities shelter their own kids from their own entertainment. That's my well, whole let's platform. Let's close on that one right there. So you mentioned Ray Liotta. He doesn't let his own children uh, watch his movies or his media where there's violence. Uh, he would not let them, for instance, play Grand Theft Auto, it sounds like. Uh, I, I'm guessing. I'm not going to for sure say Grand Theft Auto, but okay. I highly, I'm, I'm highly thinking, yes, he shelters his kids. If you want more examples, Madonna's another one. I talk about Madonna. She's been in how many different interviews, and I have quotes on my show where she says she uh, previews any video games, any movies, any TV shows, the music they listen to, any sex, drugs, violence, suicide, any of that stuff not allowed in her home for her own kids. And that's just one, just another celebrity of what I share. Yeah, and, and it's also, interesting for people to hear because, you know, the, the, uh, she made her career with singing but also showing a, fe a strong female sexual character on stage. Now people can, there are a lot of people who judge that one way or the other, how she viewed that, but if you're going to be objective, you would definitely say it was a assertive sexual character, was what she portrayed as a singer, whether good or bad, but uh, what you're saying is that in her own life she's very protective of how much of her own children can view such imagery. Now I don't believe her children are older teens yet, so that'll be interesting to see how she what protects happens. that decision as they get older. Exactly. Well, we've got uh, Eminem, too, is another one. Marshall Mathers, I talk about him and how he lives his lifestyle and how he rewrites the lyrics for his own daughter, Haley, to listen to. I've been sharing that for a decade. I did a Focus on the Family cruise with several speakers like um, uh, Lisa Turkhurst and um, several other people on this cruise for a week to a couple hundred young women. After I got done sharing that, a young girl comes running up to me at the end. Tina, I was Haley's best friend in middle school in Hollywood. She had no clue what her dad sang in those lyrics. Friends would come up and say, I love your dad's music, and they'd like list off the violent lyrics. Haley's telling her best friend and her friends, he doesn't sing that kind of music. It just goes to show that celebrities want the best for their kids, and that's fine, but I have a problem with them being able to sleep at night knowing that they're corrupting millions of young people's minds. But to make this also positive, because it's not all, it's not, real, I don't really want to say my show is a negative show, it's just shedding light on the truth in Hollywood. Sure. The other part of it is I give a lot of positive entertainment choices, a lot of positive video games young people can play because students want to leave the presentation saying, okay, I totally agree, I'm thinking different about my life. I've had people say they erased, one girl said she erased over 600 songs on her iPod after I spoke at her show that night, stayed up the entire night going through her songs, listening, any negative words, she erased it. She emailed me a week later, I just want a ball right now just thinking about it, saying, my life has never been the same. I had the best last week than I've had in years because of how positive I felt because of the negative entertainment creates that environment. You act out in negative ways. You're more depressed. I mean, this is just scientific studies that I also give in my presentation. The prefrontal right, so cortex... A quick question, Tina, on that. 
what are things parents, anybody listening, educators, parents can do, can use in their daily life uh, to help with these issues of how Hollywood projects violence, sexual issues, disrespect? Um, the first thing I would have, because I'm pop culture geared, is if you have, and this is just a, a, an example, there was a parent that came to a presentation up in Bozeman, Montana, and she heard what I had to say, and she was freaking out. She said almost every violent ban that you went through and explained to watch in your kids' bedrooms, because I have a whole separate parent presentation than my, than my teen presentation. I have like four different variations of my presentation, depending on who the audience is. This parent said to me, almost every ban you talked about is in my kids' room. And I give tips in the parent presentation on what to do. First thing is talk to your teen. Sit them down, talk to your teen, say, hey, I noticed you, you know, listen to this kind of music. What is it about? And it opens the doors of communication instead of just taking a CD, throwing it out because the kid's just going to replace it. She said, I talked to my uh, young son. I think he was like 13 at the time. I talked to him for four hours at the kitchen table. And in those four hours, he explained to me, I listen to this kind of music because I feel depressed, suicidal. It turned into the fact that he planned on killing himself that weekend, had the suicide note written, knew how he was going to kill himself. And she said because of that, he went to counseling the next week. And it's a matter of opening up communication with the parents to see if their teens are acting out in a negative uh, manner, are, are suicidal, cyberbullying, sexting, texting and driving, all that kind of stuff. If they see these behaviors, sit down with your young teenager, young middle school student even, because I'm asked to speak to third grade students already, and say, I, I notice you're doing these things or living this lifestyle. What makes you think you have to live that lifestyle? And I can guarantee you. Great advice. Are there, is there an additional, once you sit down, you have the conversation, what other tips and strategies would you give parents? I love Focus on the Family because of uh, they have Plugged In Magazine. You can go to Plugged In Online, and all of these links are on my website. My website is tinamarielive.com, and there's a whole link section that I put in. A lot of the meat of my presentation comes from these links. So the follow-up would be go to these links. There's stuff on media lyrics, you know, as far as lyrics and the songs. It, there's suicide help if your teen is struggling with suicide or even teens are jumping on these different websites, where to call. Because I'm not a counselor. I'm not uh, licensed to even help people. I get flooded with suicide notes. I'm not the one that can really plug in and help them with what they need. So I send that information off to the event planner that brought me in. They then connect that person up with the issues that they got. A lot of times it's the counselors in school that are getting pounded but they're glad they're getting pounded because the teens are finally addressing the issues that really are bothering them that they can't even focus on school studies uh, because great. of all the drama well, happening is, behind the scenes. Yeah, this is great information, and it's tinamarielive.com. Uh, thank you very much, Tina, for joining us today. We're, we're excited to have you share with us, and uh, we look, wish you the best of success with all of your speaking and traveling. Oh, thank you very much, and I, the, I think you have some links that are up for parents to go to, but there's a lot of if, info that I do share, and violent video games is also another whole section that I do talk on, which is topic huge topic today with all of the shootings that we have in our schools today, how yeah. to stay safe. We'll provide that link also on our website to your site, so thank That'll you be for perfect. joining us. You have a great week, Tina. Thank you very much, Mike. Thanks a lot. Keep doing Thanks. great work. Thank you.